Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Kishore from Tested. Kishore, have you brought me a giant waffle iron? What is this? It's a little bit better than that. This is the Cinder Grill, which just finished its campaign on Indiegogo. Mm. It's designed to be a George Foreman grill that meets a sous vide cooker, meaning it has precise temperature control to cook food to a very accurate temperature. So George Foreman grill, so it's like a grill. I, you know, when I went to college, I don't know what the kids are doing these days, but a George Foreman grill type device was like essential in my dorm room. Uh, but it was only good for, you know, cooking sausages. Hey, grilled cheese on a George yes. Foreman grill is perfect. Totally. Uh, this is not one of those, it's not a panini press. So what makes it like sous vide? It basically has the power to control the plates inside. There's a top plate and a bottom plate to very accurate temperatures. So what it does is often you set it to a precise temperature, like let's say 134 degrees if you're cooking a pork chop, and it'll heat the plates to that temperature. And then as you close the lid, it calculates the difference in height between the plates to understand when that food reaches that precise temperature internally. That's interesting because that really depends on the material of the food. That's gonna be different for fish, different f and steak and pork chops, the density of the proteins, or if you're cooking vegetables, uh, that's not as, you know, it, you, you still have to use a recipe of sorts is, is what I'm saying. It does have an accompanying app. It's only on iOS right now. And the app tells you based on the texture you want in the food, what temperature to set it at and then it takes care of everything else. This is the closest I've seen to set it and forget it. There's no water bath, there's no plastic bag. It's literally put it on the grill, set the temperature, close the lid, walk away. Would you consider it kind of like an oven where you can finally control the temperature? Um, but of course, much smaller, maybe more power efficient, um, be similar to that? Absolutely, except it's better than your oven in terms of the precision mm. that you can get it to. So I've cooked now pork chops, steaks, salmon, chicken breasts on this device. And for most of those, it cooks them really, really well and really precisely where you get that kind of sous vide even layer of temperature throughout. Throughout, meaning if you put a thermometer, a really high precision one, at just at the, the top and bottom in your meats, it's gonna be consistently at that temperature. Absolutely, and then what you can do is crank up the heat on this up to 450 degrees and sear off your, your fish or, or whatever your protein is. To, and I think it's really done well with steak and, uh, and pork. Mm. I, I had a little bit of trouble with, with chicken because it kind of flattened the breast a little bit. You can see this is a heavy duty thing. It's yeah. really heavy. Um, and so it put a little pressure on that. Something delicate like salmon, I also had a little bit of that flattening on it. But the stuff it cooks well, it cooks perfectly. So I'm understanding the max temp is 450 degrees. It's gonna flash sear it. 450 degrees actually isn't that hot for searing. Most people, if you're gonna sear with a cast iron, a blowtorch, even put it into a broiler, it's gonna be much hotter than that. So is that- and Much hotter. I mean, we're still talking about like most people searing, most people searing at home at like 500. Start that sense over again? Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about. Most people we're talking about searing at home are gonna be cooking five to 600 degrees if they're using their stovetop, even with a cast iron grill. So it's not that much lower than that. And I really tested this out with a steak and I found I added a little butter on top of that steak when the searing happened, it still came out with a pretty good sear. It's not as good as if you did it in a cast iron and you do have the option of taking it off of here and just searing it your other way. All right, well enough talking about the cinder. Let's talk about, or show exactly how it works. So what you usually do is you just set the dial to the temperature, load in your protein. Oh, we have protein inside. We have a pork chop inside. And what we've done with this pork chop is I set it in here about an hour and a half ago. So I'm really putting this thing to a test. It has a top grill and a bottom grill. Both of them pop out pretty easily. They're ceramic. They have these precise temperature sensors underneath that can't get wet. So you can't put it in your dishwasher, but you can just usually wipe them dry and it works fine. And you're really cooking one thing at a time here. You're not yeah. layering vegetables around your pork chop. You can do that, but I don't really recommend it. I think this is, I wanna cook one thing on here. I mean, you can definitely, I would definitely cook like multiple pork chops, but just one item type at a time. So wait, let's, this is a really good test because pork, of course, is something you don't want to undercook. And what you've chosen here is a really big, thick pork chop. 
Um, and it's gonna know, you don't have to measure that, there's no calibers involved. It's gonna know the thickness, but you've cooked this, it's kept its temperature, so it is a set it and forget it. You don't need to take it out of the oven, so to speak, when it's done. Um, if we were to cut this pork chop open now, what would we see? I think we would see the very slightest pink color, and, but it will be cooked through and kept at the temperature that I set it for, which is 134 degrees. You wanna you want test that? I don't wanna test it because I don't like eating meat that looks like this. I wanna sear it off We first. wanna sear it, okay. okay. All so right. um, one thing to note is when you first get a cinder, you have to go through a calibration process so it understands the difference in, uh, the precise difference in uh, height between these two plates so that when I close it, it can calculate this thickness very precisely of the protein that's in between the two plates. What's that calibration process like? It's just through the app. It's pretty simple, but it takes about a half hour to get going okay. with it. Um, the app itself, not the greatest thing in the world. So I found myself more often than not just using the dial, not only because the app is only on iOS and I have mostly Android devices at home, mm. but we're gonna crank this thing up to sear right now. Okay. So all you do is take the dial, Turn it all the way up to sear, and I'm gonna clip, I'm gonna pull off the protein while it's heating up, and just leave it here on a plate, and just close the lid, let it uh, heat up. It only takes a couple minutes for it to uh, to get up to uh, that 450 degrees, and it'll make this kind of slight whirring sound as it's getting up there, but it's relatively quiet. Like, do you really hear much of anything right now? No, and it's you can not. Kind of, this isn't hot for for sure. The handle. Does the top get hot? Top gets hot. Bottom gets hot. Oh yeah, it's a little bit hot. It, it'll start to really warm up here in a second. And I imagine that it pulls a whole lot of power yep. when it's going through this scenario. But what I found is once it gets up to that temperature, it gives you a notification that it's ready to sear and you put your protein back on there, hit a button, let it go for about 45 seconds to oh, get a good bad. sear. Okay, 45 seconds on an even sear across top of they have a pretty big surface area. I'm really tempted to cut a slice of that pork chop. Do you want to? Say, yeah, let's take, a, let's take a look. All Come right. on. I know it's not gonna taste as good as if it's seared, but we wanna show that even without the sear, you can, you can cook all the way through. And, and there you go. Even look at the side, side of that pork chop. It's yeah. definitely cooked through. Um, yeah. It is not the most appetizing looking piece of no. meat I've ever had right now, because without that sear, you don't get that that browning on top with the beautiful sort of flavor bits that come through. Do you actually want to taste it? All right, yeah, let's, let's give it a taste. Mm. All right, how is it? Is it cooked through? Mmm, that was pretty good. Nicely salted, I mean, just salt on top of pork. Um, it was really juicy. Yeah, that's the thing. Pork chops, easily overcooked. And we didn't brine this pork chop to make sure it was gonna be extra juicy. We just cooked it straight off, put a little bit of salt, on top and bottom, and that's it. Retained its juice. That's pretty good. Because it just cooked to the right internal temperature, and we didn't see this massive loss of fluid from inside the protein. And when we opened that up, that was pretty much right after we'd been cooking and sitting at the stable temperature. It wasn't like all the juices were flowing around. It didn't make a big mess. No, I mean, you'll definitely get some weeping of fluid out from the protein, but not as significant as what you would get if you were just cooking it in a pan or in the oven. All right, so I do see a little bit of smoke coming out. Yeah, you can we, probably uh, feel on top, it's getting a lot warmer. We're getting it, close. It is up to 360 degrees right now. So it's just a couple more minutes until it gets up to that sear temperature. So it is. it does take a little while if you want to sear with this device. Um, it is set and forget for cooking to temp, but the sear, you have to take it out and put it back in. If you want to sear yourself, you could just throw this on a grill also, throw it on a cast iron, totally. use a blowtorch, that's still gonna suffice. Um, but I think the, if you're gonna have something this big on your countertop, I think you want it to have it do multiple things. It has to be the one-stop shop for cooking your protein. Right, right. And what do you think when you see an item this big? I mean, when you I, think about your countertop, do you I, have space for something like this? It's, it's like, would I rather have this or would I rather have four waffles, <laughs> right? Like, maybe I'd rather have four waffles. It is a really big device. And, and um, unless you're eating a lot of steaks and a lot of you know, even like very like um, consistent proteins, um, it's not necessarily gonna cook as well. This thing is heavy too. I think it weighs like, 20, 25 pounds easily, if not more than that. And so it's not gonna be an item that you can just easily take off your countertop, uh, stash away, because if you stash it away, I bet you this thing's not coming back out. What's the most you've put in here in your testing? I put three pieces of steak on there, 
and it cooked fine. There was definitely enough real estate to cook for a normal size family. What I found though is limiting is that this thing is big. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is really, really big. And what's the trade-off on having stuff like pork and steak and chicken cooked perfectly versus the real estate it eats up on my countertop? But it was delicious, still juicy. Absolutely. Chi juicy chicken, juicy steak. The one drawback I would say is it's harder to cook with like marinades and other wet methods that you would like to infuse certain like items. So like with a sous vide, I can throw some herbage in or like with salmon, I can olive oil poach it. That's something that's harder to do here because it's just, it, it's a grill. Mm -hmm. And the cleanup process, you just wipe it down. Wipe it, it down, cool. ready to go. Uh, and you have to wait for it to cool down. It is now up to, oh, it's ready to sear. All right, searing time. All right, so I'm gonna open this. Can you open up the lid? Yes. And, oh, simple. Ooh, okay. A little steam from before. Go ahead and close it up. And I'm just gonna press this button. Is that closed? Yep, that's closed. Oh, wow, okay. So that creates a seal around it for temperature, even though it looks like the lip doesn't go all the way down. Got it. I, it's basically squashing, the plates are making contact, and the precision technology back here is really understanding that thickness between the plates to make sure that the temperature, when it's doing its sort of more sous vide precise cooking, is getting to the right place. Now it's just trying to heat the crap out of it. I'm gonna put my microphone closer to it. I can really smell, smell the searing, you can hear the crackling of the meats. I mean, one of the advantages you, you might say versus a countertop sear versus this, you're getting sear on both sides at the same time, so it might save you time that way. I don't quite buy that. You just flip yeah. over your protein. How much does the cinder cost? Cinder is uh, on Indiegogo. If you were an early subscriber, it was about 430 bucks. It's gonna go up to about 500 bucks by the end of the year. Um, it is a really precise, well-made, hardy machine. Like I feel like I've used this a bunch now and it'll last for a long period of time. I mean, it's a different approach on the same concept cooking your proteins using low temperature so you're not gonna ruin the meat and using controlled temperature and controlled time. Um, and it's about finding the recipes that are gonna work for this method when you're not surrounding it with, with water. It's air that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, heating in. You ready to take a look? Yes. All right. Oh! That is a good solid sear yeah, that on that. that was pretty the, good. And then let's take a look at the bottom. Okay. A little burnt bits from earlier, but I think it's in pretty good shape. I'm just gonna go ahead and close this and just unplug the, the now cinder. Now you're only searing uh, the top and bottom, not the sides, of course. You could do that. I could easily put it back in, hold it on its sides. What's and the thickest side. thing you could put in there? This is the thickest thing I have put in there, but I think you can get a little bit bigger, like about two inches mm. and still have a pretty good result. All right, let's cut into this. Oh, this looks good. And as expected, the sear actually did not discolor the, um, the inside. Still looks nice and juicy. Grab yourself a piece On there. The inside. Cheers. Cheers, pork chop cheers. Pork chop cheers. That's the cinder. Thank you so much for testing it, Kishore. Good? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mm. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Well, links below, I'm sorry for the cinder. Mm. If you guys want to check it out, like Kishore said, it's on Indiegogo right now. And we'll be back next time with more stuff tested. We're going to have more workshop.